Hello everyone, this is Kay and welcome to my another live stream today. So it's the 2nd of September uh, 2020 on Wednesday. So welcome to my channel. For those who are new to my channel, my name is Kay and I am a Japanese full-time forex trader based in Tokyo, Japan. And in this YouTube channel, I mainly talk about how not to lose overtime for those who have been still struggling in forex trading, while most of the traders would focus on how to win or how to make profit. And also, I have been using Ichimoku Kin Kohyo for the last five years as one of my main trade strategies. And I have been sharing extensive knowledge through the original books in this YouTube also. And as far as I know, I am the only Japanese trader who teaches Ichimoku Kin Kohyo from the original books in English, so hopefully you enjoy my Ichimoku lectures too. I run the Ichimoku Close community, so if you're interested, you can just click the join button on YouTube and you're always welcome to join the community. So today's topic is about stop loss, uh, because today is Wednesday and every Wednesday and every Thursday, uh, Friday, Wednesday, Friday, I talk about my own strategy. So I will talk about the market based on the Ichimoku too, but the main focus for today's YouTube live is about the stop loss. So before starting here, uh, just a disclaimer, all this knowledge is based on my own experience and knowledge. So when you take trades, please do with your risk. So let's see who's here first. Anybody in trades right now? Hoping to have a, you know, hope you have a, you know, stable, stable profit. All right, consistency is a key. Consistency. So Mac, Danish, Josie, and Gabriel, uh, Checkmate, Arkady, Charles, thank you for joining. And Hamze, Onkar, Mehdi, Sandro, Tauhid, Brigitta, uh, Karim, Jeroen, Vincent, Sandar, Lawrence, Henry, thank you for joining. All right, Michael, and uh, yep, Gabriel, stay gold. All right, <laughs> grab some coffee. All right, go ahead, Jaren. <laughs> yep, Sunday. Yep, good to see you, Roy, Zoyeb, and uh, Cyril, Greenleaf. Thank you for joining also. All right, so here is a GPP USD, and this is a daily chart. And as you can see, this is uptrending right now because the Kumo is moving up and Kijun Sen is moving up, moving up right now. And also price is above that Tenkan Sen here and Chikou Span above the candles too. So basically this is uptrending. So our focus should be buying. Where to buy is the right question to ask yourself in this kind of situation, right? Never look for sell chance because this is uptrending. You may think that, oh, there is a pin bar here. Uh, there's a pin bar and uh, the price looks to be uh, the price may stop here you might think like this but that's that's exactly wrong right the price may stop here but the possibility for the price to go upwards is relatively higher in this case because this is uptrending so when you were watching the real time like on this pin bar too you might have thought that okay this might be a reversal downwards but actually the market keeps going up this way. So always make sure to follow the major trend direction, which is you know introduced by Kumo and Kijun Sen is the most important way to capture the trend direction. If they are flat, if Kumo flat, Kijun Sen flat, then you can think that uh, this might be the reversal. But because Kijun Sen up and Kumo up right now, this is uptrending. So there is a chance that the price continue to go up this way. Okay, so that was a real little recap on how to identify a trend direction. And also, but however, there is a recent high on this level. There's a recent high here. So the price might stop here. Now hold on to get this uh, lines on. So there's a recent high on this level of a 1.3507 area back in um, 13th of December 2019. 
So and the price is now reaching to the previous high. So it might be reversal. It might be reversal here, but um, as long as the Kumo and Kijun Sen pointing upwards, we have to know that you know this is potential uptrending right now. So that's very important to uh, to capture first of all. All right, indulge Kayon. Thank you for joining, Mr. Fernandez, George, Roy. All right, Ali. Thank you for joining as well. All right, so. So here is today's topic is about stop loss, and I have already introduced the way how you can put the stop loss based on my own uh, strategy called KTS. So there's a free PDF down below in the description, so you can click on that link and get the PDF for free. And if you get it, it it looks like this. There's a you know big picture of myself, and uh, if you scroll down a little bit. There is a way how I would capture the trends by Ichimoku, Kumo, and Kijun Sen in multiple time frames. And if you scroll down a little bit more, there is a stop loss strategy. So today's lecture is going to be based on this stop loss strategy here. So this is on page 11. And so it says where to place a stop loss. And my answer is at the recent high low in is good time frame. So when you take a buy, so in this case, this is five minute chart, and this is downtrending in five. So when you take the five minute chart to take a trade, and then the stop loss should be slightly above the recent high. So when you take a sell here, stop loss will be here, uh, slightly above the recent high. When you take a sell here, the stop loss is above the recent high of this level. And when you place a sell here, then the stop loss should be slightly above the recent high, somewhere in this level. Make sure that you have uh, you know little gap in between the tip of the wick and bit uh, and a stop loss, because um, if the price comes back to the stop loss, this might be double top, and the price can go backwards from here like this, without hitting the stop loss. So the idea is that the uh, you know you don't want to hit the stop loss. Uh, you don't want the price to hit the stop loss many times, and to avoid such a you know stop losses, uh, invalid stop losses, uh, you want to put the stop loss slightly above the wick pointing upwards or above the recent high, so that when there's a double top in the market and goes down, it doesn't hit the stop loss. If the stop loss is on right on the wick. Then the price can go up, and this can be double double top, and you exit at the stop loss, and the price goes downwards afterwards, which is going to be kind of regretful trace, because uh, you are uh, you know you are towards the right direction. So um, stop loss is important. First of all, you need to put the stop loss no matter what, because unless you put the stop loss, you don't know. How many percent risk you're taking? So depending on the how far the stop loss is, let's say if, if it's 20 pips of uh, stop loss, then you can calculate uh, what lot sizing you have to go for, depending on uh, how much you have on the forex account. So that you know it can, it, ha it can be like two percent, one percent risk per trade. So stop loss, you have to take it. Every time you take trades, make sure to put the stop loss. I remember there was someone who say that you know I never put the stop loss, and you know it it it, it is very dangerous thing to do, right? Uh, because you know if you put the stop loss, right? He was saying that if you put the stop loss, then it, it, when the price comes back to that level, it will be you know exited automatically. But if I don't put the stop loss, then the price, whenever the price comes back to the position, we can just exit. With break even, so he thought that uh, you know stop loss is not really a good thing because there's a potential like a uh, reversal, and the price hit the stop loss and you lose basically. But my idea is different. I always make sure to put the stop loss so that I can exit at the reasonable place and look for another trace, another chance for trace, 
on the same pair or uh, different pairs, I look for this, uh, this, uh, the next chance, basically. But if, you, if I don't stop loss, if I don't put the stop loss, first of all, um, I don't know when to exit. Maybe uh, I will be exiting like, uh, you know, 100 pips of like losses, I might have to exit. Or maybe 80 pips of, you know, uh, stops, I have to exit it manually. Which is, you know, which is not really good uh, in, in psychology as also. Uh, you might get struggle when the price keeps going towards, you know, against your direction. And also, if the stop loss is tighter, then um, it's going to be time efficiency. It's going to contribute to time efficiency because let's say in this case, uh, if you put the stop loss above like here, for example, and if you place a sale here, if your stop loss is here, then this is too wide. And not only lose, you know, you lose a lot of uh, amount of, amount of, uh, you know, uh, money you have on the account, but also it takes time for the price to come back to the stop loss. This is in 5 and from here the price went downwards all the way to this level. So let's say the price start to go up here and it may take uh, you know, a couple of days to for the price to reach the stop loss. And on that couple, during that couple of days you have to keep holding this cell, knowing that you know you're running losses, and this is not really good for psychology, and also it's not really time efficient because it takes a couple of days to reach to the stop loss, and you're risking some money while you're running some losses, so it's also not really time efficient in that sense too. You have to cut the stop loss. You have to cut that position. Whenever the price goes against your direction, you have to exit it once, and then you have to look for another chance to buy or sell, or hold it, maybe. So that's a very important thing about stop loss, right? Always make sure to make sure to put the stop loss. Um, I said it on the previous video that the stop loss is like the seal bet. So when you drive on the highway or freeway, uh, you always make sure to put the the seal belt right on so that in case anything happens in case any like a bigger car accident happens it can save your life so it's the same idea as the stop loss you have to always make sure when to exit so that uh, you know you can be psychologically and uh, money wise safer that way okay so let's see All right, Uncle. What if Kijun Sen crosses Tenkan Sen in uptrend? That will be a buy chance, I guess. Yep. Sunday, uh, GPPUSD going down since yesterday due to USA PMI data was good. Right, right. Yep. That was positive, right? That was positive. So USD was quite strong uh, yesterday. All right, Ashok, thank you for joining. Good to see you. All right, Anthony, thank you for joining as well. Good to see you. Okay, Sunday says that some of the cases stop loss and reverse. Finally, we will not be in trade. Do we need to re enter? As long as Kijun Sen Kumo is moving down in higher time frames, then you, have, you can always look for the next entry chance on that same pair. Yeah, so so uh, let me get to the point of why I put the stop loss here. Why not here, or why not here, or why I put the stop loss here. Let me explain this. So in this example, let me just zoom in a little bit if I can. All right. So I put the stop loss here. When I place a sell, this is my stop loss level. And the reason is that this is above the recent high. So recent high in this case is this one. And I put the stop loss slightly above the recent high. 
and the reason is that because uh, this is in the middle of uh, reverse in waves. I talked about the wave theories uh, yesterday, so if you missed that uh, video or live, you can always check the archive videos. But this is reverse in wave, consecutive reverse in waves here. So as long as the market goes down, this is going to be the middle of the reverse in waves, like this, all the way down here. And uh, this is the reason, this is the primary reason why I put the stop loss here. Because what happens if the price stop renewing the recent low and stop, start to go up from here? Then what happens? Most likely, this was the reverse in wave. And after that, let's say this becomes a like a V wave and the price turns to bullish from here. And not only the price turns to bullish, but also the price start to uh, you know, mark the next in wave like this. So this becomes no more reversed in the wave, but after this V wave, the price start to go up on this bullish in the wave. So in this kind of condition, we have to expect that the price can break the recent high on this level upwards to this way. Right? So I'm talking about the wave analysis here. So but as long as the uh, downtrend persists, there should be a reverse end wave continuously. After this, there should be a reverse end wave so the price will break the recent low and the price continues to go down. And this is a definition of the reverse end wave and exactly this uh, Kumo and Kijun Sen Tenkan Sen shows which way the price is going by its direction. So. But what if the price stop here, stop going down, and price reverses uptrend from here? Then the price can break the recent high upwards, and that's why this is reasonable to place a stop loss. Because what happens if the price starts to go in wave and keeps going up this way and renews the recent high upwards too? This is it is going to be exactly the confirmation that the price is now reversing uptrend. So there's a good chance that the price continue to go up this way from there. So once again, it was reverse in wave, it was a beautiful downtrend, reverse in wave, like this, and the price kept going down. And from here, if I place a sell, if I place a sell here, then what I expect is that I only expect the price to renew the recent low downwards. To this way, so that it can be a persistent and uh, reverse in wave, and I expect the price continue to go down, along with the higher time frame downtrend confirmations. So if I place a sell, this is the only expectation of, of mine. So if the price does not renew the recent low, but let's say the price supported by this low and the price start to go upwards from here and also if the price start to create end wave bullish end wave afterwards then I will exit if I look at the market uh, real time then I exit manually even before the price hit the stop loss I just exit it or if I can't see the market then I will just let the price hit the stop loss on this level which is reasonable because if the price renews the recent high, then this is no more bearish in the wave. It was bearish in the wave and there was a potential continuous reverse in the wave, but if the price stops here and start to go up, and not only that, when the price when the market breaks the recent high upwards, then this is no more reverse in the wave for sure. So this breakout can be the confirmation of this potential market reverse. And that's why it's reasonable to exit here if it's done automatically. And that's why I put the stop loss slightly above the recent high from this reason. So yeah, make sure that you understand this concept of the stop loss. 
Okay, because this is very important. And also, the risk I take per trade from this sell to the stop loss should be a 2%. In between, this should be 2% risk, 1% or 2% risk, depending on market condition. And if the price goes upwards, reverses upwards, and hit the stop loss, I still take 2% only of my whole account. So I'm still safe, and I can still have uh, you know enough money to look for the next trade chances. So always have to save money to to uh, you know to take next trades. So two percent will be decent. If you are still new to the forex trading or stock trading, I recommend you to take only one percent risk per trade. So let's say your account is one thousand dollars, then you only take ten dollars per trade. If your account is uh, $10,000, then only take $100 per trade. 1% will be decent if you are still new to take trades. Okay, so let me ask, let me see uh, if there's any other comments here. Fabio, thank you for joining. And uh, Johnny, good to see you. Okay, uh, Kayonan, please everyone click the like button. Mr. K, do you have time? Please analyze NZDCHF. This is uptrending. NZDCHF is uptrending. So, which time frame is uptrending is a key. Daily chart, 4 hour chart, 1 or 30 minute chart. Which time frame is uptrending? And also, what kind of confirmations you can find to enter in 15 or 5 is going to be the next question. Yeah, if I have time, I will take a look at it later. All right, but yeah, thank you for the reminder, uh, Kion. As always, if you uh, if you liked today's live already, please press a good button before you leave, so that you know you get uh, I I, I uh, you know I, so that I can keep going this way. All right, Road. Thank you for joining. And Sunday there will be some sell op options in uptrend. Um, do you take this type of sell option? Uh, what do I mean by sell options while uptrending? For example, GBPUSC is an uptrend, but it is started selling since yesterday. Also, this one GBPUSD is going up, and this is not going down actually. If you think this is going down, then this is you know you didn't you don't capture. The whole situation in the market. This is uptrending, right? There's there's no reversal in wave yet. This is consecutive end wave from here. Well, from here, this is consecutive end wave, and the price continue to go up this way. So this is uptrend, right? There is no downtrend confirmations yet. So I expect the price continue to go up this way in this case. All right, hi Karine, thank you for joining, and Thanapal, good to see you. All right, Anthony, uh, wise advice on capital risks, thank you, you're welcome. All right, KB, thank you for joining. All right, MHB, New Zealand USD. Yep, yep. So the way you can identify bullish or not is by looking at the Kumo angle and the Kijun Sen angle. If Kumo is moving up, either Senko span A or B up. In this case, Senko span B flat, but Senko span A is moving up. And also, Kijun Sen is moving up too. So basically, this is uptrending. So I expect this continuous end wave in this kind of situation. So let's start to look for some uh, you know, trading edges on this uh, G uh, GBPUSD and talk about the stop loss places. So daily chart uptrending and one hour is, uh, let's see, oh, this is becoming flat now, kind of retracing backwards now. So daily chart is uptrending, so I expect the price will be supported at some point and it goes up this way, is my, is my view. If daily chart becomes flat, then this market can go downwards or go up and down in the range. 
But now daily chart is uptrending, so that's why I expect the price continue to go up this way. So let's say the price start to go up. Um, I mean, this is not a good, not really a good example because uh, the retracement is kind of too deep. So there's no like a buying confirmations. We cannot find any buying confirmations in this case. The Kijun Sen should move up. And Kumo should move up in one hour chart to look for buy chance in lower time frames. So in that sense, let me take a look at other pairs. All right. All right, Roy. Uh, thank you for joining. Usually stopped out break even when uh, setting stop loss and trailing stop at a five minute chart uh, trade trading stocks. Oh yeah, when you take trade stocks, maybe you have to depend on like one hour chart or 30. Maybe five minute chart and stock market is too, too, too narrow, I believe. Volatility, I guess, especially penny stocks. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Yeah, so um, this is not a good example to look for buy chance now. Um, yeah, Hamzi, that's right. This is like the head and shoulders. So there's a potential break to the downwards. This is going to be a gyakuten signal also. So in one hour chart, there's a potential reverse and the price may continue to go down this way. So although the daily chart is uptrending, we cannot look for buy chance in this case. Right? We have to let the time go a little bit until we see a decent downtrend in higher time frames. So in this case, I won't touch this one. I won't touch this one and look at other pairs. So how about Euro USD daily chart? It's flat now. And Euro GBP, this is going down. Okay, so Euro GBP looks like this is going down in the daily chart. So let's take a look at the, the one. Okay, one hour chart shows that this is a beautiful downtrend too, as you can see. Um, Senko span B is down, A is down. And Kijun Sen is pointing downwards too, sharply. So this is a nice downtrend confirmation. Alright, so let's take a look at the 15 minute chart. And see when we can sell. And if that's the case, what would be the stop loss? Okay, so here is a 50 minute chart and the price is going down still. Looks like the price broke the recent low downwards on this level. And the price continued to go down. I mean, technically, weak point in downwards was here. So clearly, the price broke the recent low downwards now. And the price looks like this is co continuous going down this way, is my view. So let's say I take a sell right now and the stop loss is going to be slightly above the recent high which is at this level. And this is going to be uh, in pips wise this is like 20, 21 pips of stop loss which is not really bad. I usually set the stop loss between 15 to like a 25, 20, 25 uh, stop uh, pips of stop loss. So 21 is okay for me. And I expect the price continue to go down this way. Because daily chart is going down, one hour chart is going down too. Right, so this is a stop loss, 21 pips. And I place a sell right now. Right, of course we have to look at a scarcity uh, confirmations or Fibonacci bounce confirmation or you know any other confirmations Bollinger bands but let's say I take a sell here and then my stop loss is, is going to be above the recent high which is at this level and I expect the price continue to go down this way and this should be 2% risk per trade 2% All right, yeah, Euro GBP. Uh, yep, yeah, this is a sell chance. Tanapol, that's right, that's right. Yeah, and Mr. Fernandez too. You're right. Euro GBP is strong downtrending now. Yep. Yeah. 
Okay, so let's take a look at the five now. In five minute chart. So this is downtrending in five also. And in this case, if I find this uh, confirmation to, tell, to sell in five, then for some reason, let's say I take a sell here. And then my stop loss in this case is also going to be above the recent high, which is at the same level as the 15 minute chart. Sometimes, you know, in five, because this is more detailed, uh, you know, lower time frame, we might see some, you know, little pushbacks, little pullbacks like this way. So in that case, I put the stop loss in 5 on this level. Uh, if I depend on the 50 minute chart, this is going to be the stop loss. If, uh, if there's a little pullback in 5, right, this is going to be the stop loss in 5 minute chart. And once, once the price goes towards my direction, and once it breaks the recent low, and after the confirming next pullback, like this way, then I move the stop loss to break even. I move the stop loss to break even in that case. So that it becomes either break even or win game now. So, um, like I said in the beginning, my forecast is how not to lose over time. So, until I said the break even is actually the game to play. Until after that, right, this is going to be a break-even win game anyways. So I don't really care about so much of about this, uh, you know, market movement. I just look at the daily chart and whenever daily chart goes flat on Kijun and Kumo, then I look for the exit timing. Otherwise, the price just hit the stop loss or break-even and I will just look for the chance because I don't lose any money in this manner. All right. So, yeah, this is the way I take trades, stop loss and break even strategy here. All right. Wire level uh, is better for RSI. Um, I don't really use RSI uh, as my part of strategy, so I'm not really sure. I use stochastics only for the oscillators. All right, Jorena, GBPUSD, we are almost on pullback in Fibonacci 38.2%. Maybe market goes up. All right. All right, Euro GBP, we are on monthly Kijun Sen level, so the market is in equilibrium. Shouldn't we wait to see which way the Hane line market is heading? All right, so let's take a look at the monthly chart. Euro GBP monthly chart. And let's see, hold on, let me just delete all these lines. <clears throat> oh yeah, the price is exactly on the Kijun Sen now. That's true. Yep, so in this case, um, we never know which way the price is going. The price may go down, the price may go up. We never know which way it's going. It's going. So yeah, the price is exactly on the Kijun Sen level now on this monthly chart. But Kijun Sen does not really work as a support resistance while Kijun Sen is flat. But Kijun Sen shows the mid price of the range. When Kijun Sen flat, then it shows the mid price of the range. That means the price goes up and down through the Kijun Sen. And now the price is going down to the Kijun Sen. So in this pattern, there's a chance that the price continue to go down this way and then come back to Kijun Sen later on. Yeah, because this is, you know, uh, down up, down up and down wave now. So the price can penetrate Kijun Sen downwards and the, the price might go into the Kumo in this case. <clears throat> yep. All right. So yeah, that's basically the analysis on this weekly chart uh, sorry monthly chart and let's take a look at the weekly chart also yeah on the weekly chart too the kijun sen is flat pretty much well this is going up right now but overall the kijun sen is flat this is just going up and down up and down 
and there is no continuous uptrend. So Kijun Sen is pointing upwards now, but it can go down anytime soon. And the price goes up and down through the Kijun Sen, and it looks like the price is going down this way now. So, um, you know, um, I all, all, only take trades where there's a trend, decent trend, on the daily chart or four hour chart. So, when and when there's a range market, I don't really look at that time frame. So in this case, I look at the daily chart to be downtrending. So I decide to follow the downtrend on the daily chart. Okay. Right. Looks like there's a uh, lots of uh, pairs that you want me to look at today. Looks like the market is pretty active. All right. So let's see. Let me stick to Euro GBP comments. All right. Euro GBP monthly chart case has been a flat for the six months. Oh, Kijun Sen has been flat for six months now. We can only we can follow daily chart if keep downtrending. Yeah, yeah. Kijun Sen flat now for 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And this is the seventh month of where Kijun Sen flat now. Yeah, so it can it can go up and down to any anyways. Euro GBP monthly is a Y wave. Um, yeah, this is Y wave now. That's true. So it's kind of expanding Y wave. So we can see that, uh, yeah, the price can go up and down also. Looks like this is going down for the previous, like, uh, you know, two candles. So now we can expect that, that the price go down this way to some point. It may reach to the low level of this Y wave and the price may reverse from here too. Yeah, so in this case, because this is monthly chart, on the daily chart, we should see a decent downtrend if this wave is going to be formed in the future. All right, Pat B. Hi, K. Uh, if assuming your stop loss level is more than 2%, like 5%, do you limit your position size or do you look for another trade with a 2% stop loss? I limit my position sizing. Yeah, always make sure to put the stop loss with 2% risk, no matter how far the uh, how far the stop loss is. Let's say the if, the if the stop loss is like 100 pips, then you have to calculate to make it 2%. Or to to have a 100 pips of stop loss to have a 2% risk, then you have to have a bigger big account, big account. Yeah, ideally if you stick to 5 minute chart or 50 minute chart, the stop loss should be, I think I like up to 40 pips or 50 pips of stop loss is going to be at most. Yeah, if, if the stop loss is like 100 pips by 5 minute chart or 50 minute chart, then there is something wrong in the market. Maybe there was a big news and the spike went upwards sharply and then go downwards and you're looking for the sell chance afterwards. In that case, the stop loss is going to be very high right it might be like you know like somewhere closer to 100 pips of stop loss which is not really ideal so in that case i will look for other pair to take trace the market is quite volatile anyways in that case yeah stop loss should be somewhere between uh, 15 to uh, 25 pips or 30 pips of stop loss is ideal All right, so let me take a look at a couple of other pairs now. So hopefully you understand the concept of stop loss, where to put the stop loss and how, when exactly to move it to break even. I mean, I just wanted to talk about the importance of stop loss today. So I hope you get the idea. So all right, let me come back to some comments now. And uh, all right, first, thing, first one I saw was I think uh, NDDCHF. So let's take a look at the NZD CHF pair. Um, all right, here we go. 
So right now, this is the monthly chart. So looking at the daily chart, yeah, it's flat basically. The Kumo is flat now, and Kijun Sen, Tenkan Sen are going up. But uh, yeah, basically this is flat, so there's no uptrend. This might be resisted in this kind of you know uh, descending level, and the price may go down from here too, or it can be resisted on this level and go downwards too. Yeah, Kumo flat, and this is bearish Kumo. Right, so uh, we have to wait for the bullish Kumo to be formed, at least, right? And Kijun to move up above the Kumo, and then we can talk about where to buy. But right now, the Kijun sends below Kumo, and currently Kumo itself is bearish, so I don't look for buy chance in this case. Then let's see, GBP USD we have covered it already. And uh, NDD USD, right? NDD USD, right now, let's see. Oh, yeah, this one looks better, right? This one looks better. The Kumo is moving down, moving up. Um, Senko Span B up, A up, Kijun Sen up, too. There's a Kijun Sen, Tenkan Sen, Gold Cross happening, and Chiko Span above the candles. So, this one, uh, NDD USD, is the better one to look for buy chance than the NDD CHF. This is decent uptrend, so you can look down lower time frames and confirm the trend and write on this uptrend. Yeah, this is a nice one. Alright, and let's see what else. Alright, GPP USD, head and shoulders. Yeah, we covered the GPP USD. And Euro GBP. We've covered it already. GPP JPY. Okay, GPP JPY from Karim. Um, let's see, weekly chart, GPP JPY. So let's see. GPP JPY on daily chart, this is uptrending too. And on the weekly chart, this is flat. Kumo flat, Kijun Sen flat. So there is no trend on the weekly chart. But as per the daily chart, this is a decent uptrend now. The price broke the descending trend line on this weekly chart upwards. And the Kumo Senko Span B up, A up. Kijun Sen is uptrending now. So in this one too, we can look for the buy chance in lower time frames. Yep, so that's a nice one. Alright, looks like you get the idea of how to capture trends at least. And if you are able to capture trends and up or down trends in higher time frame, then you should be fine. I mean you are on the right direction. So the the the, pr the price should go toward toward the direction, you know, um, anytime soon. All right, Euro GBP, covered it. Nifty Fifty Kumo twisting happened on our chart. We we'll go down further. Uh, you have to look at the daily chart. Daily chart still looks the uptrend on Nifty. Hold on. Uh, where is Nifty? Yeah, this one. The daily chart, Kumo is still moving up, right? Um, right now, Senko Span A is gradually moving up, and Kijun Sen is flat too. But because the price is above, that Kijun Sen is still. And the price looks like this is... Oh, so there wa this was a doji candle. Doji engulfing candle. So when the price breaks, the doji upwards, exactly on this level, upwards, then I will think that this is going to be continuous uptrend this way. But overall, this is uptrending still, so I would say that this is bullish. Yep, NDDCHF, uh, we've covered it already. Let's see. Yeah, it's kind of interesting to see all these markets because uh, you know I don't really take trades on Nifty, or I don't really take trades on this NDD pairs. So this is just my idea that I'm sharing it, but it's it's so interesting to see all these charts that I usually don't look at it because I don't know what comes next. So it's kind of exciting to see. <laughs> yeah. All right, Aditya. Uh, hello, Mr. K. If Senko Span A goes down and Senko Span B goes up, which direction is the trend? Senko Span B, for sure. 
Senko Span B shows the long term market momentum, and Kijun Sen shows the mid term market momentum, and Tenkan Sen shows the short term market momentum. And Senko Span A is supportive to Senko Span B. All right, let's see. Yeah, Eurogy Big Monthly Chart was Y Wave. Yep, yep. Okay, so let's see. Reverse in wave on the hourly chart, okay? All right, let's see. Yep, Pat B, you're welcome. <laughs> All right. USJPY, okay, Danish. USJPY, let's see. This is triangle range in a daily chart. The price is in between Kijun Sen and Kumo here. So this one is very difficult to take trace. There is no direction. So the price may go up to this level or it may go down from here. I don't know which way it's going to be honest. Kumo flat, Kijun Sen flat. So I don't want to take trace because I see better you know, pairs than this one. If there's a breakout to towards either direction, this way, this way, then I will come back to this, this pair. Otherwise, I will let the time go on this one. Difficult to take trace. Alright, Jerry, how did you finalize the currency pairs? Why don't you check more pairs? You Do you add remote pairs? Um, I don't... First of all, I don't look at the minor pairs or exotic pairs. And first, I only took trade on USDJPY uh, when I was still a newbie. I was only looking at that pair and then I mastered it. I knew exactly what makes this USDJPY to move down and up fundamentally and technically speaking too, what works on that pair or not. And then I've added Euro and I've added GBP and I've added CAD pair and then AUD pair I added. Recently I added AUD pair but I don't, I haven't touched on the NZD and I haven't touched on the CHF because I'm still studying it. The, it's, I'm sti still studying not only the fundamental news but also the technical analysis. What works, what not work, right? I'm still in research. So that's why I haven't added these uh, you know, pairs yet on my watch list. So my recommendation is that the uh, and a 10 pair is just enough, right? 10 pair is just enough for me. If I don't see any trends in the market, then I just stay away. Or if I don't see any trading edges, then I just stay away from the market, basically. So I don't think I will, you know, uh, expand. Or, you know, I will take more pairs to my on my watch list. 10 pair is just enough. Sometimes I switch. For example, like uh, if I don't see any trends on this. USDJPY, for example, then I will just take this away and you know uh, put another pair on my watch list. That's more trending on daily chart. So yeah, I switch around, but basically USD and Euro, GBP, JPY, and AUD, CAD are the main currencies that I take trace. All right, Encore. You're welcome. Yeah, I didn't forget your question. I, I covered Nifty. <laughs> All right. All right, Onkar says, your teachings are helpful catching intraday trades also. I'm making good profit. 40% capital appreciation in the last three days. All right, that's great to hear. It's great to hear. So make sure that you be consistent in monthly basis, yearly basis. Make sure that you be consistent. But I think that that's a nice start. 40% in 3 days is a nice start, so don't gamble. Trade like a business plan, right? Whenever you look for trading edges, think it like a business plan. What kind of risk you're taking per, per business, what kind of reward you're expecting per business is important. Every time you take trades. Alright. Shaibu, good to see you. And Onkar, you're welcome again. All right, Euro NZD, Mr. K. If I enter now, is it too late or not? Okay, so let's take a look at that one. Euro NZD. 
Yeah, once again, I don't take trade on Euro, I mean NZD, Euro NZD. But let's take a look at that one. Um, yeah, looks like I don't have that on my watch list. NZD. So, let's think it together now. So, Euro NZD right now, daily chart, this is flat, right? Kumo flat, Kijun Sen flat now. And Huawa chart, this is going down nicely. Okay, so for our chart, we follow in this case. And one hour chart, this is going down too. So this is nice. Euro NZD has for our chart, one hour chart down confirmations. So we can look for buy chance in 15 or 5 minute chart. Yeah. And if I take a sell right now, then the stop loss should be above the recent high, which is at this level. Yeah, slightly above the recent high is the key. The price may go up, be, be resisted at the, exactly at this level, and we may go down afterwards. So we have to have a little buffer in between the recent high and stop loss is a key. Okay. This is only like uh, you know two or three pips above the recent high, but it makes a huge difference eventually. But yeah, this uh, Euro NZD looks like this is a stable downtrend. So you can look for the sell chance now. Yeah. All right, Dinesh, you're welcome. How you determine the trend? I have already talked about it on the previous lives. So please come to my website. And if you scroll down a little bit, there is my watch list, case trading strategy. And on here, if you click on this one, it will forward you to the playlist on YouTube. And there are you know, a couple of videos that explain how I capture these trends by Kumo and Kijun Sen. So everything is saved in the archive. All my sessions are based basically on the archives. So you can uh, enjoy this one. This is KTS playlist. And there is another playlist for uh, Ichimoku. Ichimoku Kinko Hyo playlist. Flex Tester for playlist. Must watch videos for newbies. And mental techniques I've talked about it. And money management too. So there are six playlists, six major playlists that you can enjoy. All right. All right, Jerry. Thanks, Kay. You're welcome. You're welcome. You're so humble about the other pairs after being a Ichimoku master. That's the best lesson I have learned from you. Being happy with a small set um, by learning them thoroughly. Sure, sure. Glad to hear that. Glad to hear that. Yeah. Uh, you know, I don't mind looking at any pairs. You know, it's just that, you know, I don't take trades on New Zealand pairs. I don't take trades on Bitcoin. I don't take take trades on Nifty. And that's why I feel bad. <laughs> yeah, because, you know, uh, technically speaking, I can, you know, analyze any markets. But if I don't take any trades on that particular pairs, then my, my advice is only from the technical viewpoint. And also, I don't take trades on these pairs or indexes or you know stock markets, and that's why I feel a little bit bad, right? Um, but if you can refer to it, then that would be great. Yeah. <laughs> yep. All right. Onkar says, in this case, forecast lines will work much better. Yep, that's true. The yeah yeah Euro NZD uh, TP target will be when the daily chart becomes uh, f sorry four hour chart becomes flat. So right now four hour chart is going down nicely. So let's say you take a sell. Let's say you take a sell right now, and when Kijun Sen start to go flat like this way, and when Senko Span A start to go flat also then this is where you have to look for the exit timing. Until then, you can just keep trading that profit. Yep, yep. In terms of the take profit uh, point, let's say uh, in the daily chart, there's a recent low here. So this is going to be the ultimate target. 
1.72622 is the ultimate target or even further to this level will be the target. But um, if the price goes upwards, uh, you know, goes retrace backwards in the middle, then uh, we have to look at the 4. And this is trending down. This is reverse, reverse in wave and trending downwards now. So based on my my um, you know uh, strategy, I used the Fibonacci extension to capture the potential targets also. So um, hold on, let me place that one. So this is end wave, reverse end wave, and the price is going down now. So in this end wave, I expect the price to go down all the way to one point uh, one thirty eight point two percent which is on a uh, 1.7457 area and one uh, 161.8% which is on a uh, 1.734416 area this is what i call target a this is what i call target b so i expect the price trending downwards all the way to these levels in numbers in numbers but if the price does not reach to this these levels and the price consolidate start to consolidate consolidate at some point like this way then Kijun Sen should go flat and then Kumo Senko Span A should go flat at that point and then I will look for exit timing here so these are my targets if I take a sell all right, Gamini, you're welcome. All right, Aditya, you're welcome too. All right, MHP, I earned I earned 10 pips on Euro GBP on the, on the basic analysis. That's great to hear. Great to hear. All right, so make sure to follow trends because this is very powerful. Yep, Kayona, thank you, Mr. K. Your analysis and advice on NZCHF, good job. Sure, you're welcome. All right, Sam. Hello. I need help to down download the book. Thank you. Oh, sure, sure. Yeah, I will reply the email. Yep, I reply. All right, I'm in. Welcome. Okay, so I think this is the end of this live. I will end the live in about five minutes now. So I hope you learned how to capture trends and where to put the stop loss and when to move the stop to break even and then uh, when the target potential target can be for today's lesson and i will show you more and more examples in my future lives that i do every day so yeah i hope you keep learning from my channel so uh, like i said in the beginning i talk about different topics every day as per this um, weekly program guide so today was the focus was on my own strategy so that's why I didn't talk so much about Ichimoku Kinko Hyo but I talk about my own strategy which was the stop loss and target for today's topic and tomorrow is going to be on Thursday and tomorrow I will more talk about uh, Ichimoku Kinko Hyo based on the real charge examples and tomorrow's topic if you scroll down on my website, there is a program guide. I've actually created the guide up to two weeks, and I'm still working to uh, come up with uh, some ideas and topics from the third week onwards. But tomorrow is going to be a Thursday Ichimoku lecture, and I just put Ichimoku here, <laughs> basically. So I will talk about Ichimoku, and I will check charts. So like today, if you have some uh, pairs or stock markets or commodity indexes that you want me to look at by Ichimoku way, then you can come back tomorrow and I will, you know, uh, you know, scam all these pairs. Okay, so, <clears throat> excuse me. So, um, yeah, I hope uh, you have a great uh, rest of your day. Looks like there are some trends up and downwards today, so I, I hope you get some, you get some uh, profit. Tips 
by following the major trend direction from the KTS strategy. All right, so once again, thank you for joining everyone, and I hope you have a great uh, rest of the day, and I will see you tomorrow. All right, so stay gold. Bye for now. Matane. Thank you.